Hello everyone, it is me, Jerry Gaming here, and welcome to the second part of the Splatoon 2 patch 5.0.1 tier list. Now, a little heads up, there is a new patch coming really soon, so I'm going to try and make these videos as quick as possible. Hopefully I'll get this done by the end of this week, or maybe even sooner than I think. So without further ado, we covered over the low tier weapons, or the, you know, the bottom and the low tier weapons from F, E, and D. And hopefully we'll be able to cover C and B. And hopefully this won't be as long as it is the last time, because it took me like a whole 56 minutes to just explain weapons. So without further ado, let's get into it. With the C tier, we're in the middle tier list. Um, for the C tier, for the... Uh, the I, 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 okay, that's it. I, I'm not gonna come with names for these tiers because it's, it's, it's not there anymore. I don't know anything that starts with the letter C that's like basic or okay. Um, starting with the uh, clapples <laughs> or the clear dapple doolies. Um, the difference between this and the two other dapple doolies is that this one has a bomb. And because it has a bomb, um, it could be able to be able to, it could be able to have some sort of reach. Because, um, beacon. And Toxic Mist, that doesn't help the Dapple Duel, it doesn't have synergy with it. So, with the Torpedo and Splashdown, it can at least allow the Clear Dapple Duel to be a little bit more aggressive, or should I say a lot more aggressive. But it still gets outranged by a lot of things. And Torpedo, even though it does work on low range weapons like the Clear Dapple Duelies, but it works better on weapons like the, uh, the Kensa Undercover Umbrella. But that's for another story. Uh, clear Dapple Duel is pretty good. Um, but, you know, not absolutely amazing. Uh, next up, I have both the regular range blaster and the grim range blaster. Um, I might be underrating the regular range blaster a little too much, but I haven't seen a lot of it, so I'm just putting them next to each other. Uh, burst bomb antenna missiles, that's pretty good, but without the damage up that I had in uh, Splatoon 1, you can't really do anything... Or should I say the ability to get the burst bomb and splash damage combo to do an instant kill is going to be a lot more harder because now you need a direct with the burst bomb and you would probably need a really good splash damage hit from the Grim Range Blaster. Um, Tenemis is though still a good special but I don't know if that helps the Range Blaster to an extent that it needs to help it. But, you know, whatever, right? A Range Blaster? I feel like the main problem is that... Um, it's too inconcrete, and you know, Suction Bomb is a really inconcrete sub, so you really need that Ink Saber main and Ink Saber sub. I feel like most of the weapons on this tier list in particular is just really reliant on your gear abilities. So, Range Blaster really needs that Ink Saber main and Ink Saber sub, but if you have that on, you might be fine. Uh, Ink Storm, really good special, but the main problem is that the Range Blaster takes way too many points for whatever reason just to get the Ink Storm, so you'll probably get like three to four of those. Of a rank, so it's it just takes a long time for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Next, I'll have heavy splatling deco. Um, I feel like it's this. I feel like it's the same problem with you know the other weapons that don't have a bomb with bubble blower. I feel like it just doesn't work. Main weapon itself pretty good. It can paint, um, but the the regular one with sprinkler and stingray that's more of a backliner thing. And Bubble Blower is kind of a frontliner thing. Well, maybe it's not really necessarily a frontliner special, but having it on a weapon that's not going to pop the bubbles as quick as, for say, Forge Spire Shot Pro, or uh, Kensa Spire Shot Junior, or uh, the Tenebrilla itself, it's not going to be that amazing. But admittedly, with it, it is on a good main weapon, so that's why it's kind of on the C tier. But I don't really see a lot done with it, so. That's why I just kind of have it down here. It pops the bubbles uh, better than the E-Leader and the Cherry H3, but it's, it's still kind of niche. Then again, these are niche weapons I'm going over, so whatever. Uh, next, I'll have the Nautilus 47. I did look up the name. I'm pretty sure it is the 47, because if I'm wrong, I'm actually going to be pretty mad. <laughs> Anyways, Nautilus 47, Point Sensor Baller. I don't know how much better that is compared to the uh, Deco one, or the Custom one, or the Nautilus, uh, it's the Nautilus 79, but, um, Nautilus 47, uh, Baller is a really good special to get around places, Point Sensor, I'm not sure how that does with a Splatling that needs to be in the ink, so, if it had something like Curling Bomb, it would be better, 
but Baller does help it a lot, and it does get Baller pretty AO right, so that is pretty good. Um, custom Hydra Splatling. Ink Mine, Ink Armor. Um, personally, I think I might be underrating this weapon a lot, but it's still really slow, and it doesn't get Ink Armor as quick and as efficient as the Splattershot Jr., Kensa Undercover Brella, and other top tier Ink Armor weapons. So that's why I have it down here, but it is still really strong. Ink Mine, I feel like, works with it pretty well because it's on a stationary weapon that is slow, so that, in my opinion, works out pretty well. I don't really have any comments about it since I went over the main weapon itself in the previous video, but uh, Tenta Sorella Brella, maybe, could be better, but uh, Splash Ball Curling Ball Launcher just doesn't make it amazing. The main weapon itself is amazing, but the sub and special, um doesn't really do a lot for it it can, it can make it play more defensive curling bomb launcher can help it like maybe cover up zones but i just don't see it doing a lot with curling bomb launcher if it had maybe another special maybe it would do all right like again ink storm that's always a good special to have but still uh main weapon that is very defensive with a splash wall that's you know very defensive i think that's pretty good but not amazing and all that types of stuff and then uh, E-Leader, the scoped and the regular because I feel like they're kind of the same thing at that point. But um, Ink Mine and Ink Storm, that is very good. I feel like a stationary weapon with Ink Mines is, you know, of course pretty, pretty good. But also giving an Ink Storm, which is a um, turf covering special for a weapon that doesn't really want to focus on covering but wants to focus on picking off opponents that are in a distance that can't reach you. So I think that's pretty good. Ink Storm, you know, it, it's always a good special to have. So that's just a. It's, I feel like ink, having it having Ink Storm is always a plus up. So that's that. Tri Slosher and Tri Slosher Nouveau. Um, I don't know which one's better than the other, so I'm gonna have them right here. Possibly the worst Sloshers in the game, but then again, if they were, they would be in the D tier list, like the regular Slosher, uh, Burst Bomb, Ink Armor. That's pretty good. It can. Um, I feel like it allows it to play more aggressively, so it might be better than a Nouveau, where the Nouveau has Splat Bomb and Ink Storm. But the Nouveau would be much lower if it didn't have Ink Storm, probably. They're still they're both really good at turfing coverage, but they still get outranged by a lot of things. They are fast. It can be strong, but um, just due to the fact that it just gets outranged by a lot of things, it doesn't really help that much. I mean, the dead zones. The little like weird spaces that um, for some reason you wouldn't get hit by the tri -Slosher. at least those were fixed, so I think that allows it to be a bit higher, um, but I don't think it like allows it to carry it all the way and stuff. Uh, Kensa Octobrush, Suction Bomb, and Ultra Stamp, I don't know how amazing that is for the Octobrush. The Octobrush can kind of get around places, but not as much as for say the Ink Brush, but giving it Suction Bomb is better than giving it Auto Bomb and Beacon. So it allows it to play somewhat more aggressive, just somewhat. It allows it to at least do something a bit more. And then Ultra Stamp, you know, that being a very, very amazing special now, um, that's that's very good to have on an Octobrush that wants to get around places. Rapid Blaster Deco. I don't know how good this is, but I feel like it's like you can actually play aggressive with this. Suction Bomb, Inkjet, that's pretty good. You know, Rapid Blaster itself is an okay main weapon, but giving it a Suction Bomb and... Uh, inkjet, I feel like it allows it to be a bit more aggressive, so I think that's pretty good. Not as amazing as the Kensa Rapid Blaster, but it's it's pretty good. It's it's pretty good. Kensa uh, Splat Charger, um, Sprinkler Baller. If it didn't have Baller, it would be. If it, it didn't have Baller, and if it had like a Backlighter Special, it would be better. But Baller is still an AR right special. Sprinkler on a Charger that doesn't really paint but more of like quickly picks off opponents at a distance. You know, that's really good, but um, it doesn't really help a lot when your special is a frontliner special. If it had like, for say, Ink Storm, or if it had something else that's a backliner special, like Stingray, well, it can't have Stingray because the regular Splat Charger has Stingray, but we'll get to that much later. Um, it would be better, but whatever. Both Bamboozler, uh, 14, MK1, and three. Um, I don't know which one's better because you have one with curling bomb and ten of missiles, which that is pretty good because 
It allows it to get around places and has tended missiles, which is a good special. But then you have the other one. Fizzy Bomb actually allows it to paint. And Bubble Blower, uh, unlike... Well, first of all, Fizzy Bomb can actually pop the bubbles if you have Object Shredder, if you get it to the third shake. So that's pretty good. And not only that, but the Bamboozler itself can pop the bubbles pretty quickly if you have that Object Shredder. Maybe in like two shots, if I remember. But it's really good at popping bubbles. The only problem still is that it can't paint. But I think Bamboozler... Uh, Mark III, I think could be better than this. I don't know, but um, for now I'm just going to place it over here. I might place it higher in the next tier list after the patch, but um, for now I'll just place it down here. Uh, and then next I have both Spooshomatic Neo and Spooshomatic 7. I think it's, yeah, it's Spooshomatic. Um, don't know which one's better because you have one with Beacon, which that hurts a lot, but Spooshomatic Neo spams Tenon Missiles. And Tenon Missiles is now, you know, really good. So, being able to spam Tenon Missiles faster than, I think, pretty much any top tier weapon with Tenon Missiles is very good. So, maybe it could be higher than this. But it can't really do anything by itself. All it does is just form Tenon Missiles. You can't approach people when they're playing with weapons that completely outrange you. The only way to get to them is to sneak by them. But even then, in competitive play, more than likely you'll, there will be those teammates that will call you out in your position and you'll just die pretty quickly so that kind of doesn't matter unless you have ninja squid then that might work out and spooshomatic 7 splat bomb and ultra stamp i think that's really good because it allows it to play aggressive from a short distance like splat bomb um unlike curling bomb you can at least actually get people from a distance so like curling bomb will have to take some time unless you have like sub power up but even then it's kind of hard to kill people with a curling bomb nowadays and splat bomb you know it can kill people at a distance if you, you know, throw it right and all that type of stuff. You know Slot Bomb, it's just good to have. And then Ultra Stamp, which, you know, that alone is also really, really good. But I don't know which one's better, but I think the Spooshomatic 7 might be better. Because it could still get, it could get that Ultra Stamp too. Not as spammable as the Ten of Missiles, but it can still get it enough. So I think that might be really good on its own. Next, I have the .52 Deco and the, the Kensa .52. Um, I don't know which one's better. I think the Kensa one is better, though. Not by a long shot, because they both have, like, some things that make one or the other better. Curling Bomb and Stingray, I think that's pretty good, but Stingray is, again, a backliner special, so... But it does have Curling Bomb, so it does allow it to travel to places, uh, better. So, maybe it may not be as much of an issue as it, on paper, is. But it's still a backliner special, so... Nonetheless, it'll have to go back one way or the other. Unless you have that, you know, quick super jump and you just, you know, want to go back to base all the time, which could work, could, but you still have those few extra seconds of where you, you know, are kind of leaving your team hanging a bit. Kensa 52, though, Splash Wall, I don't know what it does for it. I mean, since because it's RNG is, you know, pretty bad, Splash Wall probably can help it be a bit more defensive or can help it before... The, you die with the 52 because of its RNG inaccuracy and Booyah Bomb, you know, being it being a really good special to have, I think it could work out with the .52. So I think it just works out with the. I think it works better than the Aerospray because first, because the main weapon is better. First of all, second of all, it has Splash Wall, so it allows it to stay alive a bit longer. So that could work out with the .52 Kensa and all that types of stuff. Both uh, sloshing machines. Could be underrating these a bit too much. Maybe they could be higher, like just by a tier, like in the B tier. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna put these here for now because uh, no one uses these. Everyone uses the Kansas Hoshi machine, but no one uses these. No one uses these ones. Um, regular one, Auto Bomb, Stingray. It's just niche. I think that's just the problem. It's just niche. Like it's just average. It's all right, but it's not like it's not terrible. Def definitely not like you know uh, any of the other weapons in the low tier that have auto bomb but don't you know have synergy with it and uh, stingray on a, again a weapon that doesn't want to stay in the back all the time is kind of weird and it's not like the um the .52 deco where it has curling bomb so it can kind of get to places better but um it, it's it's just niche it's just niche it's all right uh sloshing machine neo could be good because it has point sensor and you can spam point sensor with it now, so, and it has Splat Bomb Launcher, and that special is pretty good, especially if it's on a weapon that can, you know, defend itself, and actually do things on its own, unlike the, um, 
the Flingsa Roller, which is a bad main weapon itself, so Sloshy Machine Neo could be better than this. Uh, next I'll have the Gold Dynamo Roller. Um, maybe I'm a bit overrating it, maybe because like, it has Splat Bomb, Ink Armor, that's good, but it doesn't really do a lot with Splat Bomb, because it's like, you either have two choices, you have to either use Splat Bomb, or you have to use the Roller. You can't just simultaneously use both of them whenever you want to do a bunch of things. Ink Armor is still really good, because, um, being able to paint a lot, and then being able to, you know, use Ink Armor... It's pretty good, but Splashshot Jr. Kent's Undercover Brother still exists, so they are better ink armor weapons. But the Gold Dynamo, again, I feel like it's just a niche weapon. Uh, Kent's a Dynamo, though, much better, but again, we'll go over that in another video. Um, Kent's a Luna Blaster. I want to say this is good. The next patch will probably be really good, but Fizzy Bomb and Ink Storm, that's, it's just good. Main weapon itself, I feel like just gets carried by the sub and special that it has. You know, Fizzy Bomb, it's a good, um, it's, it's just a good sub. It's a really good sub to have. Especially since it's kind of like Curling Bomb where it can allow you to get to places in a way. And then Ink Storm, on a weapon that doesn't do a lot of turf coverage as you want it to do, that is, I think, pretty good on its own. It's just niche. Um, could be better in the next patch, like over to the B tier. Maybe the A tier as well, for all we know, but that really depends on how it goes. Um, Splash Omatic, I really, really like this weapon, but I just know that, you know, Toxic Mist, Ink, Inkjet, is, isn't is super amazing. Toxic Mist isn't great. Inkjet can be great, but I think the reason why it's not any lower is because it can spam Inkjet. And it can paint. It can paint really amazing. It has a really good accuracy. If you If you can aim with it, somewhat decent you're gonna kill people if you you know get up close to them but you still get outranged but it does have inkjet so it kind of helps with that especially since you can spam it a lot so that's why i feel like it's niche it has it has like these a little bit of bad qualities but it also has qualities good qualities like oh yeah it can paint really good it can spam inkjet so that's what i think carries it a lot up to the mid tier at least and then, for the last of the C tier, we have the Permanent Ink Brush. Could be underrating it. Could be. Maybe it could be higher because Sprinkler, uh, Ink Armor, I feel like what it's- I feel like its main job is to just run around and spam Ink Armor and never die. But then again, Splattershot Jr. can do that too, but actually, help, you know, help your team. I feel like Permanent Ink Brush is kind of just running around, spamming Ink Armor, doing whatever it can. I mean, Sprinkler helps it paint- uh, in two different places, so that can help out spamming armor, but other than that, doesn't really do anything to, you know, help the team, you know, get your opposing opponents, other than spamming armor. It, it could be alright, but I don't see it just doing a lot, so that's why I just have it down here for now. So, uh, main weapon itself, pretty good. Sub and special, pretty good. Just, you know, niche and all that type of stuff. That's what this tier list, that's what the C and B tier is, they're just niche. And then next I'll have the B tier list. The B tier list. Hopefully I'll be a little bit more descriptive about why I think these weapons are pretty good. So, um, maybe not the first two ones, because the first two ones I have the Glucodulis, Deco, and Kensa. Um, I feel like, the, you know, the main weapon itself is pretty bad, but the kits itself can kind of do some things for it. You either have the Deco version that kind of unlocks its potential, because, you know, Splash Roll and Baller. And then you have the Kensa one, which I feel like it can actually help it paint, and actually has ink armor, which is the, which, funny enough, I think is the only dually with ink armor, so that's pretty good. Um, the Deco one with Splash Wall and Baller, um, Baller helps it, you know, get around places, and Splash Wall allows it to stay alive longer, so I think, and also help it paint longer as well, like, Splash Wall itself doesn't paint, but like, the main weapon help it to at least do something just a bit longer. Even though Splash Ball does take some of that ink away, so, but still, Splash Ball could mostly help for at least defending yourself from other opponents at least. It can work, but just not, we just, I just don't see it working to like, top level play and stuff. Uh, Kenza Glugga do the same thing, but it does have some pre, it does have Fizzy Bomb. I feel like it gets carried by that though, and it has Ink Armor, which again I think gets carried by that, so that's why I kind of have it here. If it was a better main weapon, like if the, all if the Glugadoos could just paint 
better as a main weapon, then it would. I think it would be higher. I think that's really all it needs. It's just it needs to paint better, because I think it's unexcusable that has a low fire rate and doesn't do anything in terms of painting. And was supposed to have only one Dooley Dodge roll. That's the worst part. But you still have to, you know, rely on constantly Dooley Dodge rolling just so you can get those two shot kills, which isn't fun and isn't super consistent. I have both the Splat Roller and the Kansas Splat Roller here. Uh, I think Splat Roller maybe might be higher. Maybe. Because, I'll, well, then again, it's a slow weapon compared to the top meta weapons nowadays. Um, but it does have Curling Bomb and Splashdown, so... It does allow it to get to places compared to the Kent Splat Roller, but I have it next to each other because... Uh, Bubble Blower is technically better than Splashdown, in this patch at least. And especially with a weapon that can actually pop the bubbles pretty fast. I think it's pretty good, even without Object Shredder. Even without Object Shredder, you don't need Object... I feel like uh, a bomb and then like two swings from the roller can actually pop the bubbles. Um, maybe even one swing without Object Shredder. Or you could just put on that object shredder and just throw a bomb at the bubbles and just, you know, pop it instantly, but... Um, Kansas Flat Roller with, with um, the Bubble Blower, I feel like it's really good. Can allow it, because when you're at, if you're, if you're at least at places, if your team is like, you know, getting some good coverage going on, then it could be able to actually, you know, abuse the Bubble Blower and then actually kill your opponents with it. But that really depends on if your team is actually like, taking control of the whole stage because if it isn't if they aren't you're not gonna do a lot I mean you could use Splat Bomb to like fend off some of the opposing teams but it's not gonna cons it's not gonna consistently work out Splat Roller though Curling Bomb allows it to get to a place at least even if your team is kind of being suppressed so I think that kind of works out pretty well and Splashdown I guess the more than I think about it on a Splat Roller that wants to move around to multiple different places um that's pretty good Carbon Roller Deco, I want to rate it lower, but it being able to have Burst Bomb is really good. Because the Carbon Roller itself can't kill up close at occasions, but it being able to have Burst Bomb, you just throw a Burst Bomb and you throw your Horizontal Swing, you're probably gonna, you're gonna kill your opponent one way or the other, even without the, you know, the damage up that it actually needs. Because, uh, the Carbon Roller... You need to be like really, really, really up close to get a kill. But with the burst bomb, you could probably get your opponents at least stuck, or you can do that 60 damage, swing at your opponent, and they'll probably die sooner than you think. And auto bomb launcher, I'm actually, I'm actually not sure how I feel about auto bomb launcher. It could be good, could, but I mean it's better than curly bomb launcher. I'll say that at least. Uh, splat dulies, maybe I could be underrating it because it has burst bomb and Tenna Missiles, that's that's pretty much your average weapon, your average good weapon, like uh, the Splatter Shot. But um, I don't know actually, I feel like it's just a niche weapon, I feel like it's, that's literally what it is. It can do, it can do turf coverage, it can uh, you know, it has a decent amount of power, it has Burst Bomb to allow it to, you know, do some kind of work, and it has Tenna Missiles. Um, Maybe the only reason why I have it this low is because Dooley Squelchers exist. And the Dooley Squelchers, um, Point Sensor, Tenna Missiles, it's a longer, it has a longer range, and arguably it paints better than the Splat Dooleys. So maybe that's why, uh, the Dooley Squelchers is up here versus the, uh, Splat Dooleys. Um, Point Sensor, you could be able to spam it. It's a long range. I feel like it has the same good things, the same good vibes that Splash Pro has with Point Sensor. So I think that's why it works out pretty good. And also, it being able to have Tenna Missiles, you're practically gonna go- you're practically gonna know where your opponent is almost at all costs. So I think that's what makes it pretty good. It could be better, because again, you'll know your opponent where- at all costs, pretty much all the time. But then again, there is Custom Dewey Squelchers, but you know, it's A alright. Maybe even above average, I don't know. Splatter Shot, practically the most average weapon in the game. Burst Bomb, Splashdown, that's very good, but- it has Splashdown, and I don't know what that does for the Burst Bomb, since I feel like you would use the Splashdown as more of a panic than you would to actually, like, get to your opponents. Now, with the 96 Deco, that's different, but we'll get to that in another video. Um, Splashdown, I just don't know what it can do with the Splatter Shot, necessarily, but I know it can do something. I just don't see it doing a lot. It can kill, 
you know, because that's burst bomb, and when you get that burst bomb, then you're gonna get your, you know, two shots. So that is pretty good. Even if it only got the splash damage of the burst bomb, I'm pretty sure it still could get a two shot. Um, so I, I feel like it's, I feel like it could be higher. I feel like it could be higher, maybe. Uh, Explosher would have rated higher if it had a bomb with Bubble Blower. It's not a bad weapon with Bubble Blower, but it has Sprinkler. Sprinkler is good, but it has Bubble Blower, and you need to do some pretty awkward things with it to work with the Bubble Blower. And in the middle of it, the heat of combat, or the heat of things in competitive, that's not really great, so it's kind of just here. If it, Again, if it had something that wasn't Sprinkler, or if, it, if, if one of the subs and specials were different, just one of them, it would be better. Like if the Explosher had like, um, Fizzy Bomb or, you know, Splat Bomb for all I know, then it could be better. Or if the special was like, um, you know, Booyah Bomb or it's just something else that wasn't, or Ink Storm. If it just, you know, just, if it was a special that could comply with the Explosher, could work out. And the Explosher itself, I don't think really does an extremely good job at popping the bubbles by itself as a main weapon, so... I feel like it could be okay. It could be okay. Uh, Zinc Mini Splatling could be better, but I feel like no one just plays with it, so that's why I just have it here. Um, Curling Bob, it allows it to go to places, so that's good. And, you know, the fact that the main weapon paints it paints pretty good, and it only needs 180 points to get it special. I think it's only 180 points. Maybe it might be a bit higher, a bit lower. I just know it only needs some amount of points, less than 200 to get Ink Storm. And you know, I guess the more that I think about it, the Zinc Mini Splatling's job is just to paint and maybe like defend itself from other opposing weapons like Splatter Shot, maybe Splat Dooleys, maybe Google Dooleys, maybe Blaster, and maybe other weapons that get arranged by Mini Splatling. But top tier weapons probably would get around that relatively quick because it doesn't have a uh, bomb to comply with it like burst bomb for the regular one but i feel like it could be good and i'm just underrating it i don't know uh kensa sparsha jr probably better than this Pro probably better than b tier probably better than mid tier but again it's just an instance where i don't see anyone doing anything with the weapon so um i just don't know what to say about it you know it can paint really well it has torpedo on a short range weapon so that's pretty good um, Bubble Blower can also be pretty good with it, but I feel like Bubble Blower on a short range weapon, I feel like you will want to use your torpedo more than your weapon to actually pop the bubbles. So you'll have to do like the weird like little strat where you pop, where you only like shoot one of the bubbles at a time. But then again, you'll have your team. More than likely, you'll have your team. More than likely, you'll be by your by the side of another teammate. So I think. This, I, maybe I am underrating it. Maybe it should be better, but for now I'm going to put it here because I don't see anyone doing anything with it. And if anyone actually was, then I would put it higher. Um, Forge Splatter Shot Pro. Now, from a lot of experience with the weapon, I can say a lot about this. Um, Splatter Shot Pro is probably one of those weapons where it can work anything with a gear ability, any gear ability it wants, but, you know, main power up existing, it needs that main power, but the Forge Splatter Shot Pro also needs that, um, also needs that special power up. You could argue that it doesn't need Object Shredder. Like, I think Forge Splash Shot Pro might be one of those, might be one of the only uh, Bubble Blower weapons that probably doesn't need Object Shredder, because I've personally played a lot of it without Object Shredder in my times, and I think it worked out pretty okay. But, you know, and especially with main power up, I think that does pretty good. So, it could pop the bubbles with its shots maybe even faster without Object Shredder. That, or, you know, faster than if it had Object Shredder alone, but the fact that it has to fit room for the special power-up means you'll have to sacrifice some of the ability to have, um, you know, quick super jump, ink resistance, or literally any other efficient perk, but it's, a, it's, I think that's what makes it niche. It's a really good weapon with a really good kit, but it's just the fact that it doesn't have it's just Bubble Blower. Bubble Blower getting so many nerfs, it's that it just... It would have been better. It would have been better if it wasn't for the Bubble, bubble Blower nerfs. Uh, Custom Blaster? Probably should be higher, maybe, but... 
you know, now that blasters have fallen off, fallen off of the meta nowadays, it's like, I don't know. Everyone can aim for inkjet now. A lot of weapons for the meta can outrange the custom blaster or straight up just beat up the uh, custom blaster. Like, Tenebrilla can beat up the custom blaster because it just holds out the shield and it just shoots it with one hit pretty easily. Um, Autobomb can do some things for it. It can pressure the opponent to maybe go one way and then it can, you know, shoot the other way and allow it to get its kill. But that's kind of situational in a way if you only pick on one opponent, which more than likely you'll have to pick on three or two, at least a group. So... That's kind of difficult on its own to do. It's a really powerful solo rank weapon, but like in competitive, I just don't know what it can actually do. Maybe in tower control, it's like a really amazing weapon, but uh, I I'm not sure. I just feel like it's super strong suits tower control, and it could work out in the other modes, but for now, I don't know, because not really many people are playing with this weapon nowadays. Uh, regular ballpoint spot link would be next, because um, Toxic Mist and ink Inkjet, same kit as the splash o -Manic. The only difference is that this the main weapon itself is godlike. It, I'll talk about the main weapon later with the um, the next video, but um, Toxic Mist, Inkjet, I feel like this doesn't have synergy with the main weapon. The main weapon carries the kit. The kit should be helping the main weapon to be very outstanding and amazing. But um, the ballpoint spotling, I guess, is also just one of those weapons where just give it anything and it'll probably be good one way or the other because the main weapon is just that good. Just that good. And again, I'll explain how good the main weapon is or my complaints about how amazing it is in the next video. And then for the last weapon on the B tier list, um, H3D. Or the H3 Nozzle Nose D. Um, maybe I'm underrating it, but it received a lot of nerfs. Main power up nerfs, special point nerfs. It's like, there's no reason to use it over Spireshot Jr. and NZAP and 96 Gal that have been receiving buffs. Uh, you know, NZAP has received a buff where it requires a bit less points to get ink armor. And, um, you know, Spireshot Jr. just does turf coverage like a god. So, it gets ink armor much faster. And plus, it only needs 180 points to get ink armor, so that too. Uh, 96 Gal got extra range and has sprinklers, so... And it's more powerful too, and it's a lot easier to use than the H3D. So, in the heat of battle, it's really hard to use an H3, but, um, Suction Bomb, Ink Armor, again, it's, it's a good, it's good, but with other weapons that are better with Ink Armor, that's just why it's kind of just down here. It could be better, maybe it should be a high tier weapon, but because of the amount of nerfs it's received, and the weapons that everyone uses nowadays, it's like, why would you pick this weapon over the Spireshot Jr., or the 96 Gal, you know? So... Yeah. And that, ladies and gents, is going to be the C and B tier, the mid tier list. Hopefully, I'll be able to work on the uh, high high and top tier list in the next video. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video. If you did, give it a like, share the video, subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments below if you have anything to disagree with, and hopefully, we'll be able to spark an argument that won't become toxic one way or the other. And I'll see you guys whatever you do next. Take care. God bless you guys. And I will get working on another tier list video, another Splatoon 2 tier list video after patch 5.1.0 comes out. Um, but, you know, we'll, obviously we'll have to give it some time. So, you know, until then, see you later, guys. Take care. God bless you guys. And, you know, goodbye. And please share this video because I need more opinions from you guys.